num 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 so shit my watch says it's 601 but on the computer it's 556 what's up guys can you hear me let me know in the chat because you know i got to do these audio checks every single fucking time because if it don't i'm gonna regret it it's it's the it's um it's the weirdest thing about like me as a person and as a, as a guy that's doing uh youtube you know because like as i'm here and i'm sitting at my computer and i'm popping my shoes off and bring this in here there you go what's up guys i'm popping my shoes off so i can get comfy it trips me out like so I've been sitting here in my office, more or less in this chair, dead silent, not talking unless a client calls. It's crazy how you can, as you, when you start this world, you almost become a performer. And once you hit record, like this whole thing kicks in. So today I have a topic that I'm going to be talking about. And like the whole time I was sitting here in dead silence, I was like, God, I don't really know. I don't really know where I want to go with this topic today, right? Uh, but it's it's like the one thing I do know is that I can turn it on and, and, and you know, it's like a 50-50 chance it'll go well. 50-50, I'll take that. So are we coming in loud and clear? We got everybody's, everybody's popping off saying we in it to win it. So let me just do a real, real quick rundown and say hi to everybody. Ryan, what's up, dude? Scott King, what's up? Hotbox is here. Philip is hanging with us. It's all it's the same people. Jason ends. Frank D, I think, is. Uh, he, and he's also, can't believe it's a week into December already. Or into September. You know what, brother? Nothing could be more true. The software was supposed to be ready at the end of this month. And now we've had to push it another month. How many more months will we have to push it? You know what I'm saying? You guys, I had a, I mean, I had a hardcore battle with the developers last night we were, we were it was it was like a two-hour call with some people <laughs> and uh, you know i speak shitty english and they speak you know indian english which is in a lot of ways better than my english and it, there was just like communication barriers just i mean it was but at the end of all of it i think we're doing okay there's one feature that I was trying to build into it that I had to actually forego. I I don't have to forego it, but it's gonna it's not gonna be able to happen until after launch, and I'm really pissed off about it. So I had to give on that to get some other things that I wanted. Oh, God, dude, this is, that's actually gonna I'm gonna try to roll that into this whole this whole thing about breaking big ideas into small chunks because it, it it's just that's where the whole topic came up. Because this whole, dude, business is daunting, right? Anyway, let me not talk about it too much. Anyway, uh, I said anyway two times in a row, and then I just said it three times. Jason's hanging with us. Uh, Sean's here. We got Southern Pine hanging. Frank, or the Frank 70, Ash Wren? Ash Wren. Cool. Mark Guerrero's here with me. Uh, 85 Fat Boy. Uh, I think I already said that. Ink Press Prince. Sup, sup, sup. Kyler Schroeder, Scott King, a few other people, Laconic, Gary Holt, Sonny Rush, uh, Sam Am, uh, Jose Lopez, Hamilton Peña. We got some, we got lots of dif different ethnicities hanging with us today, and that's a beautiful thing. Thank you for everybody who's decided to join in. It's a, it's awesome that you're here. It's officially start time. So before I start, I got to start recording the audio version of this for the podcast. And three, two, one. We are recording there. Uh, it feels really weird because it feels like a double start. So if you're just listening to this, I usually start streaming live 10 minutes before. And then I hit record again. And it almost makes me feel like I need to reintroduce or just like re-talk about stuff. But we're not going to do that today. It's uh, 6 1 p.m., so we're officially we're officially running. Uh, today's oh shit, man. Today's episode is brought to you by none other than CCI. Now, 
I've been dealing with CCI for a while. Before I ever had spoken with them or any of that kind of shit, one of my local suppliers, Advanced Screen Technologies, shout out to you guys. Also, shout out to Multicraft. Also, shout out to uh, Caspit Productions. But Advanced Screen was carrying CCI, and I had used them for numerous different things, trying out different chem chemicals. What I really love about them is their Enviroline series, where they're they're starting to re to really push the envelope with soy and citrus based products uh, that was actually my introduction to them and then I learned about discharge inks and all the different amazing things that they offer and then uh, as I investigate further I come to realize that they make washout booths affordable ones they make drain filters affordable ones and then they also have really high-end ones for those premium high high-end top level shops not to say that we're not high-end like I downplayed us a little bit. They have the really expensive shit for those motherfuckers that are just like, you know, finance everything. But nonetheless, CCI is is awesome and they've done they've been really good to me. They make everything that you need. And since I've teamed up with CCI, they were you know, gracious enough to hook not only me, and I use it, but you guys up with a 20% discount code. This ain't temp this ain't one of them little cheesy ass ten percent discount codes or a five percenter. This is twenty percent off. So go to CCIDOM.com, load up the cart, load up, get six gallons of of the VP of the VPR emulsion, my favorite. Load it up and then check out, slam that twenty percent off, and you're winning. By the way, you're welcome. So the discount code is capital T. I got it, dude. This is what's irritating to me because I don't know if they have to be capitalized or not. But it's the Print Life 20, capital T, capital P, capital L. Go use that thing, get that discount, and enjoy the fruits of the of the 20% off that I had to work so diligently to get for you guys. You're welcome. Now, eh, let's roll the intro, eh? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Live, 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 and thank you so much, Print Fam, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hang with not only me, but with the rest of the wonderful Print family that's hanging out in the chat. If this is your first time here, don't hesitate to chime in. Say, let everyone know your name, let them know who you are, let them know what you're about. This is a family, and it's a growing family, and, you know, I mean, I... I wager that in the next year, it's going to be the most powerful family in the screen printing industry. That's just my wager. If I were a betting man, I'd throw a lot of money down on it. But maybe someone else agrees or disagrees. But the family's growing strong. And thank you to everybody who's here hanging with me uh, and hanging out with the rest of the fam, getting input, putting input, and learning and growing together. It's a beautiful thing. In today's show, I'm going to be talking about I mean, I don't really know how I'm going to get into it. Didn't think about it too much, but it popped into my head when I was thinking about something different. But the notion of taking a big, grandiose, overwhelming idea and breaking it down in a way that you can actually take action on that idea. But before we do that, uh, we're going to cover some independent shop news from the Print Life Facebook group. Y'all know how that works. If you don't, you go join the Print Life Facebook group. You submit your shop news, and then I, d I do a little read and a shout-out for you and your shop, and it's, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then last but not least, we conduct our live Q&A. So if you want to get your question acknowledged on the show, you need to call the hotline. The hotline's right there. Call 800-806-3518. As soon as it answers, hit extension 9, record your message, and we'll play that back a little bit later. I'm kind of starting to steer away from the chat questions and we're trying to really push this hotline thing, mainly because it gives a little variation from my voice. You know, we want to change things up, keep things fresh. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. But before we uh, get into the uh, independent shop news, I do want to do a shout out for last week's super chats. And uh, there was uh, there was just one last week, but she you know she's a she's a writer, she's a regular 
uh, of this show and uh, in the Print Life Facebook group and all that stuff. Shout out goes to Jamie Leinbach. Thank you for my super chat donation. It shows me that you care and it shows everybody else that you care. So thank you for that. Uh, and that is our super chat shout out from last week. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's move into the goddamn Facebook shout outs or shop news. Let's, let's do some shop news. Let's do it. Who's ready to do it? You know what? Before I get into shop news, though, I got to talk about something. Really need to talk about something. I should have titled this shit the, the, uh, on this because this topic is it's, it's interesting to me. It's also exciting to me, and then I just want to talk about it because I liked it. If y'all did or didn't know, I'm sure most of you know, Eminem, like, just kind of hit us with a new album. I don't remember how many days ago it was, maybe two days, three days. I don't even know how many days ago it, it, was, it was released, but he released an album called a Kamikaze. It's pretty good. It's, you know, it's not early days Eminem. It's not even like Marshall's Mathers LP Eminem, but it's pretty good considering he's like, I think, 50 he came out swinging, and overall the album's really good. But here's the interesting thing. He more or less slam he more or less slammed like like every relevant rapper, you know, in today's whatever you want to call that. If you call it a hip hop scene, cool, you know, or a or a trash scene. I don't really know what you want to call it, but he slammed everybody. And a few of the of the hip hop artists that are actually quite talented, like uh, Machine Gun Kelly, well, I think he's probably the only one. You know, he he came out with a crazy slam track. I mean, he came back and he slammed Eminem, slammed him. It almost felt like he had been he almost. It's almost like because this is what I would do if I were a, a hip hop artist or rapper, whatever you want to call him. If I got into the industry on a professional level, I would have pre-written slam tracks or what you want to call them diss tracks or battle tracks for every major rapper, just in case. And it almost felt like that's what this track was. Like he wrote this thing and it was just sitting on the shelf. Okay, is this turning into a hip hop uh, channel? Don't care. I want to talk about it, but it's, it's, it's a hip hop channel right now. Um, but he, he, did, he did his thing. This the machine gun, this machine gun Kelly cat. I mean, he did his goddamn thing, and then it, it like the internet it pretty much blew up because this is the first rapper to go after your boy Slim Shady, and this is the only reason I'm really bringing this up is is because this is a, a business kind of podcast or sh or show, and a lot of people might say like if they're if they're fans of Eminem, like what was he thinking, you know? Why would he do this? Or, uh-oh, M just fucked up because he put it all out there and this one guy came back hard. I think any of us that are over 30 understand what it all is. And what I believe Eminem has done is create a scenario as an older hip-hop artist that isn't real. I mean, he's, he's considered one of the best of all time, so he has that reach and he has that clout. But... He was able to make himself relevant by more or less attacking every rapper in the industry. And all he wanted to do, I think people are like, oh, M fucked up. He shouldn't have. But I think he wanted to do this from a marketing standpoint. The OG came out and said, I'm just going to blanket slam everybody. And then whoever comes after me, they bring my name into the limelight. All right. This is that social media kind of 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 uh it's marketing you get as many people talking about you as you can on an, as many different channels and listen i never deviate from screen printing and even i'm talking about it ah oh, shit um and uh um yeah even i'm talking about it right and i would never talk about this shit on a show like this so where was i going with this the whole point is that he Eminem has single-handedly blown up the internet from this album. And I think there's a lot that any of us as screen printers or, or business people can learn from this. He has leveraged social media to start talking about him. And at this point, win, lose, or draw, his albums can blow up because when other relevant rappers start, to, start going back at him, they have to listen to the track that was 
that the relevant rappers are in response to and then it's i, I don't really i mean i could yeah he's basically being talked about across the internet i haven't i honestly i haven't seen like uh oh you know i haven't seen something like this on the internet and especially in regards to hip-hop in a long time like not to where the internet's going fucking ape shit i haven't seen it maybe i haven't been paying attention but i just ha i haven't seen it in a while so kudos to m man for the marketing strategy and kudos to uh me <laughs> for somehow spinning that into uh, a business strategy for us so what can we do i don't know we we need to leverage topics, right? We need to make ourselves as relevant as possible within this, within our the screen printing community. And from there, we can then spin off and create whatever it is that we want to create. Done. That had nothing to do with the show. I didn't even really plan on it, but I was watching the thing right before this started. And it like, my mind was, just, my mind was going ape shit on it. And let's be very, very clear. And then I'm done with this. I'm 36. I know what he's doing. He don't take it personally. Not at 36. Do you? Do we take anything personally once you're over 35? Hell no. It is a strategic marketing decision made by Eminem. That, you know, he might be a little... His feathers might be a little ruffled. He wants to slam as many people as he can because he's still got some pride. But at the end of the day, he goes into this knowing full well that if he blanket slams everybody, one of them's going to come back at him putting him back up into the limelight, limelight and making his album go platinum. I don't even know how that happens anymore. I guess it's like on streams, not album purchases, but he did the right thing. And kudos to him. And I, you know, I need to take a, a page from his playbook, figure out how I can apply that to the YouTube channel, to my screen printing shop, to, to the software that we're building, to the whole shebang. Anyway, let's get back into this Facebook deal, eh? What, what do you say? News. Searching this. Going to go to the most recent because you all know that you want to be posting your shop news today. Today's the day to post your shop news if you actually want to get a shout out. Starting from the most recent. This is from Alex Rodriguez. Uh, Alex has branched out and started his first online store for a local school spirit fundraising campaign. Within the first two days, he had 15 orders, totaling 1,500, and still has another three weeks left until the store closes. This is where I'm just falling short. I had a conversation with one of you the other day about these goddamn fundraisers. Obviously, I'm going to build a fundraising system into the uh, to the Print Life shop management system because these things are like becoming the new way to, you know, to... A, a, acquire screen printing orders and not only that you make more money on these orders using these fundraiser stores they're they're blowing my mind i didn't know the power of them but like you'll even notice like inksoft really doesn't give a shit about their online designer they barely they barely care about their shop management system or any of that shit they've been putting all their eggs in the fundraiser basket this fundraiser thing has gone so crazy i think even printavo's offering one i didn't expect this but I'm definitely going to capitalize on it. I'm going to get, we're going to get you guys set up with fundraising store uh, systems on the Print Life software for show. Anyway, within three weeks, or anyway, uh, six to three days, school raised 80% of their funds they raised last year in six weeks. So much buzz behind it. I had two other local schools contact me for the same. Their previous printers were complacent, had no customer so service. And only related on ordering forms sent home with students. I highly recommend e-stores for the school niche. And that is where I've heard it is the majority of those those things are taken off. Uh, it's a super easy platform to build. I'm gonna go. I'm you know, it's gotta happen. And also, I have an Inksoft site currently. Don't use it. Hate it. But I'm going to start using those the fundraising you know platform from that. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. At least until I have my own in place. But congratulations, Alex, man. I, I'm, it's awesome. I didn't really understand the power of those things, but they are extremely powerful. Okay. It, moving on, moving on, moving on. Thank you for sharing your shop news, by the way. This is from Andrew Farias. Shop news. I can never clean out the remaining ink without getting my arm covered in ink. Yes, yeah, careful as I can be. Yeah, dude, uh, 
we chuck them at that point or get that stuff but yeah man you're digging in deep thank you for sharing this is from swear on your shop news got myself a flash dryer uh excited it's it's a cheap one that cost me 3200 pesos about 173 us dollars later on as i grow i'll definitely buy top brands meanwhile this is good for me since i just started sorry for the crappy camera i used for the pick looks good dude if it flashes shirts it'll work congratulations on the acquisition my dude uh i know i'm saying your name wrong sewer sewer that's, that's a rough one thank you for sharing this is from joe lee shop news booze news my old Ryan at DIY Press has been collecting dust for years. Finally found a use for that hunk of junk. Handmade DIY koozie palette for bonus points. Nice, dude. Works like a charm. Those little single, those little single arm presses are... You, I think they would have a lot of uses, actually. What is this? Let me, I'm gonna play this of video. Arch Apparel. Hang on. Arch Apparel was going. Oh. Hi everyone, I'm Marianne Martinez. This is Aaron Park. Hey everyone. He is the owner of Arch Apparel. Arch Apparel was going to be a big vendor at Loof Fest. So Aaron, tell me a little bit about first of all how much planning went into all of this. Um, quite a bit. So we've been planning this for several months. Um, we have all our product ready, printed, box ready to go. So the news kind of caught us off guard a little bit this morning. Yeah, and I know you have been preparing like a new collection, a special collection that you were going to showcase at Lufest. Pick up some shirts. Tell me what you were yeah. going to have at Lufest. So what so, is that? Wait, so did you guys get... So my dude, Brian, the planners of Lufest. Okay, so this is just somebody who knows that they canceled the event at 1.30 a.m. So people were getting ready to show up uh, and they canceled it. That sucks, dude. That sucks hard. I would be so pissed, actually. Sorry. That sucks, man. Thanks for sharing. I don't know. Uh, where do we got going on here? This is from Brian Washburn. Had some new mounts made for my 30-year-old Hicks press. This press is a tank, and now I can make my boards come out even further with the new mounts on them. Nice, dude. Congratulations. Good job working it out. Looks like they'll work like a charm. Thank you for sharing. This is from Paul Waba. Wa? No, from Paul, <laughs> from Paul Wa. Shop news. Exciting times at Reckless Promotions Merchandise. This week, second press installed. Even a bit of structural building alterations needed, but it fits. Let's see what we got here. All right, you got your tabletop press here from Ryan it. You got your, what is that? Uh, what press is that back there? Can't tell what that is, man. But yeah, man, looks good. You, you made it fit. You made it fit. Thank you for sharing. Bad. I don't know what this is here. Morning. See what I did there? I like I start to read it verbally and it kind of it's jarring, I think. Here's some shop news from Pat Cooley. He just converted his 1980 style light table over to LED. Curious to know if anyone else still uses one for manual art redraws or creation prior to scanning into a software package. Or am I still stuck in the past? You're probably still stuck in the past, dude. That was more of a question than shop news, but it was shop news and a question. But good job on converting it, and thank you for sharing. Mm, what do we got here? This is from Rob Suede. And now that he's getting the hang of this, it's time to upgrade from his small DIY wash booth to a much bigger 46 inch DIY 2.0 wash booth. Still sink, 60 bucks. Milk plexiglass, free dumpster dive. Uh, Comatex sidewalls, free dumpster dive. Two by fours, about 50 bucks. LED light, 20 bucks. Total, $130. Let's take a look at his pictures. So it looks like a photo booth. Damn, stainless steel sink. Damn, dude, this is quite impressive actually. It's actually really impressive. Okay, it, you know, if you're just listening to this, I'm looking at this homemade washout booth. I got to tell you, it looks pretty good. So definitely go to the Print Life Facebook group, uh, search out Rob Suede in the group, and you can see a build out of his DIY press. It looks good. It looks really good. 
This is from William Century. Shop News. Indigenous Graphics printed his first shirt for sale for the tribal community. Starting to print yeah, his own designs onto shirts and sales are good so far. Well, congratulations, dude. Print looks great. Wow, it looks really good. Good job. Thanks for sharing, dude. I said, dude, 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 dude. Does anyone know how much AS Colors Staple T? Ah, uh, never mind. It's a question. Okay, this is from Matt Miller. Has a 36 inch vinyl cutter that hasn't been used in a good three years. Finally took the time to dial in the settings. Time to make some money with that bad boy. Good job, dude. You know, I have a Graftech vinyl, vinyl cutter, which we never use. Missing out on a lot of money. Those custom names and custom numbers, it's a big money maker. It's actually one of the better options you can offer in your print shop that has like really high profit margins from from my experience anyway. This is some, I mean, he didn't write shop news, but this is Jim Kozix, new benchtop belt dryer, ready to start moving shirts through the drying process. He got it from Raynar, it's a cool tabletop unit. Very nice, dude, congratulations. Shop news from Zach Rodriguez. Hired his first employee this week. Congratulations. Congratulations. His first job was 104 pieces, manual, six color back, four color front. Pretty satisfied with what his guy has done so far. It looks good, man. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for keeping us up to date on your hirings. And make sure to keep us up to date on the firings if they ever happen. <laughs> Hopefully not. I saw this the other day. This is from Spencer Chernoff. It's pretty good. Like I'm looking at the blends and stuff, and I think that's impressive. He wasn't. He he was like, oh, I'm sure this ain't nothing for you, for your OGs, but it's a good job. I'm looking at a nice color blend from a, a blue, or from the shirt color to like a light blue to a white, and it's a good blend. Congratulations, you you handled it well. This is from August 31st. Did we already? Did I do this last? Nope, this is also new. Okay, this is some uh, shop news from Jose Chedez. Got new neoprene installed. He's wiring up the LED light tonight for the existing OEM timer. So what he's doing is he's, ref uh, he's well, not refitting. He's retrofitting a old workhorse exposure unit uh, with an LED light. And with a, he's, just, you know, he's updating it. He's putting a new LED, uh, neoprene blanket on it. And it's a good upgrade, man. So congratulations and thank you for sharing. What is this? This is... I'm not going to talk about that. Shop news. This is uh, posted on August 30th from... Dude, I'm talking so good tonight. August 30th from Kelsey John Lindsay. So, we finished up printing this design on the 50 T's. Really happy with the outcome on the Discharge Metallic Gold Inks. However, they, upon notifying the customer and uploading the job to our social media pages, the client tagged the band in the post, and then we realized the name design had been provided. Had been provided spell. Oh, so the art was provided uh, with incorrect spelling. It's shop news, but it's also a question. How would you handle it? You got to get them to approve mock-ups. That's the only way to save yourself because that shit does happen. And clients will provide misspelled artwork all the goddamn time. You you have to create as many... Uh, as, dude, what is happening? You have to create as many, not minty, but many accountable like scenarios as you can within the process so that it forces them to accept accountability for it and you know I, I had to build a system for it because it was such a problem for so long doesn't happen to us much anymore it does happen occasionally but not very often oh shit I'm not gonna yeah, that's cool though looking at a Bob Ross Deadpool figure from those little uh what are they called the little the little really popular 
vinyl figures, but it's Deadpool dressed up like Bob Ross. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They're too small, though. And, okay, here we go. I think this is probably going to be the last one. It's from John Murray Shop News. He got his automatic infrared flash dryer. And it is the upgraded version, and it came with four extra bulbs. This will be a game changer. They are nice, dude. We've been struggling with ours only because it tends to overheat. But, some, you know, somebody had, again, I'm not an electrician. Somebody had mentioned that it might be because of the way that I wired it up with a, um, a it's like the, the, it's not the right plug for the amperage or some shit like that. I don't know. If the, so I need to possibly change out the plug and uh, maybe that'll, that'll fix it. I don't know. But it's been pissing us off a little bit because it does overheat. But it's still a great deal and we use it a lot. You know, and, it, and it'll run the majority of the day, but then it'll just cut out all of a sudden. You gotta let it cool down 30 minutes and it turns back on and it's good to go again for another four hours. Uh, and that's it, man. I think that this last news is for an embroidery machine, which I'm pretty sure I talked about last week. So we're good. We're all caught up on independent shop news. Thanks, guys, so much for submitting your news. If you're new to this thing and you don't know how it works, you got to join the Print Life Facebook group. We are way behind. Uh, Sonny and Jason are trying to... Uh, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to talk about that. There's a lot of stuff I don't want to talk about right now. They're, they're working their way through it. What they're ultimately trying to do is make sure that, uh, you know, some people aren't allowed into the group. We had some things with the contest and a couple of other things where it was really like, you know, it just didn't turn out well. And then also we have the, sh the software coming out. So I'm really trying to limit who has access to the group just until it launches. And then we'll let everybody back in. So in the meantime, we're kind of slowly adding people through as Sonny and Jason kind of do background checks on them and make sure that they're not competition. That's ultimately what it is. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for submitting your shop news and, uh, you know, keep doing it because it's fun. So now let's move on to the social media reminder. Or I decided to stop doing that at the beginning and doing it, do it in the middle. So make sure that you are following me at Cam Irvin on both Instagram and Twitter. You can see it right there at Cam Irvin. So make sure you're following me on that shit. That's number one. Subscribe to the Print Life Podcast on iTunes and Google Play. Give me five stars and say something nice in the review. That podcast is it's growing. It's doing good. I actually it's really exciting. But then I didn't post last week's until like six days later. I need to get more consistent when it comes to posting these to it. Uh, and last but not least, if you're interested in being on this show, direct message me on Instagram or Twitter with the business or screen printing topic you want to talk about. Now, I know it, it probably seems like I say that every single week, but we've only had one guest and you're like, what the fuck's up, Cam? Well, here's the thing. I was originally planning on getting this thing set up and doing a, a show with guests, but I had a lightning moment and I came up with ultimately a new show and this show is and i hope i have high hopes for it uh and i'm getting it all set up right now and i'm kind of putting it together but this is where we're going to start taking i'm still going to do this but this show is going to turn into more of a less of this with me do, talking and more of like a live interaction with you guys but i'm going to do a separate show that is a full-blown interview show i'm really excited about it i can't wait to get it launched uh, I think that it'll be amazing. So just hang in there. I'm putting it all together. It's going to be coming soon. And I think y'all are really going to love it. And also, if you've been wondering why the YouTube has been just a ghost town, it's because I'm tired of doing YouTube right now. It, uh, it kind of got on my nerves. I ran that contest, and I didn't really think the contest through. And then, uh, well... You know, a bunch of people got kind of butt hurt and been out of shape about it. Like, they felt like their shit should have been the winning design, even though it obviously wasn't because no one liked it, including me. But it made me kind of be like, man, you know what? Fuck this shit. You try to do something nice and you don't. You know, everyone's kind of a dick. So I was just, I, I went through that and then I just kind of felt like, you know what? I'm just going to take a break from YouTube again. So I go on for a little while and then I stop and then I go on for a little while and then I stop. Right now it's pissing me off. So I'll get back to it in a month or so 
something like that. But in the meantime, we're going to continue to do this live show because you guys need it. I need it. We all need it. It's important. Uh, what else? Anything I need to talk about? Not it for the social reminders. Anything else? Let me go to the chat real quick. Make sure that everything's still going. Let me know if everything is still going good. If you can still hear me, all that stuff. Let me know in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, you know, where is Sonny, huh? I haven't heard. You know, I got I brought him out to a live show, a live event. <laughs> he didn't like it so much. And I haven't heard much from him since. Hopefully, he's doing okay. Anyway, all right. Well, let me know if everything's good, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, and honestly, though, like, so Ryan says, some people are un ungrateful. You can't win them all. Yep. And I also learned that when you're holding a contest, I didn't know this, but you you have to have set in stone rules. Like, I just kind of winged it, and I was like, oh, yeah, and then I changed my mind midway through because I looked at all the graphics, and I was like, eh, you know? So I needed my help. I needed your guys' help. So I submitted it, and a lot of people got butthurt about it, and I just was like, eh, well, fuck this then. You know, I mean, I'm still, there's still a clear winner because the majority of people voted for the same graphic, but I still need to announce it. Still got to get it sent out. Hey, shit. But it just kind of put me into like this situation where I was like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to take a break. All right, guys, let's move on to the business topic of the day. It's time. It's goddamn time. I sat there babbling about that part for long enough. Now, this, gosh darn, man, this topic, man, I don't even... I, wait a minute, <clears throat> what's happening here? What is the, what, what, what are we going to call this thing? So today's topic is going to be about breaking a big idea into small actionable chunks. And just to be very, very clear, I say this every week. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about these topics. I usually brainstorm on Wednesday and I'm like, oh, well, this is it. And then it turn, it may turn into this thing or to that thing. But I'm just going for it. So it's kind of like answering a question in long form. Now, today, I was thinking about breaking things down into actionable chunks. Because I was just, you know, in my mind, I'm like, well, how uh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to go from where I am now to this to the next level? Which is, you know, creating what is ultimately a fairly large high-end manual screen printing shop like a boutique shop right or a st or a print studio as opposed to like a contract printing shop and i was really you know racking my brain and, and then i was reading this book okay and you know i you, i like to read these kind of books sometimes especially if i'm just looking for inspiration this book is called get clients now from cj hayden i've had it forever i read it a long time ago and i was just kind of browsing through it and, it, you know, it talks about other forms of acquiring clients as opposed to social media. Like right now, even myself, the only way I can even consider marketing to clients is through social media. Like the idea of beating the street, pounding the pavement, cold calling, door knock and all that shit. It's like a thing of the past. But uh, this thing talks about that stuff and how it how it can be actually exceptionally useful in today's environment where people, you know, the whole unsolicited phone calls aren't uh, as as prevalent as they used to be but anyway after thinking about that i was like well god damn it you know i have these big dreams like i want to take this shop and make it the premier print studio i want to take this software and put it in a lot of people's hands but as i was thinking about it i started really remembering the process of building this software and how how much of a nightmare it was the first time around when I was building out monumentlimited.com and how much of a shit show it's turned into on the second go around you know and you I stumbled onto this process almost by accident almost out of necessity which is taking a big grandiose idea this thing that you're that you like almost it's almost like in your wildest dreams it could happen and then taking it and trying to trying to find a way to make it a reality and the only way to do it especially in the software world where everything is millions of dollars and and all of the developers are overpaid and they under deliver and all of these things the only way to do it is to really break it down into very small segments and that's kind of that's where i'm gonna go right now 
it was a really long explanation, but I really want to dive into kind of like how you can go about doing that with some big idea. So for me, I, the one, the example that I'm going to use is the software. And what ended up happening with this, this whole, the, the process was that originally I, I was looking at all the current options available at the time. And that was, I guess, three years ago. Now we had Printavo, we had Inksoft, we had the Deco Network, uh, Shopbox, they were all out. But I did a bunch of research on each one of them. I tried all of their, what do you call them? The, the trials, you know, they, some of them give you 30 days. Some of them, some of them don't let you even try it unless you pay an ass load of money to get set up inks off. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, I, I looked at all of them. I tried them all and I, I still have inks off to this day, but none of them were doing exactly what I wanted to do. So I start researching how to just, you know, maybe, maybe I could build my own, no big deal. And then you start researching, especially from the, the Americas and you're like, holy shit, this is going to cost a hundred thousand. This is going to cost six figures. This is going to cost a million bucks. You know, you, when you start doing the research, you go, oh, not going to work, not going to work. But what I did instinctually is go, okay, well, I like with my experience in the past with other contractors with the construction world i knew that there was always the high i always knew that and what i was shopping when i first started looking at it was the high but i also knew there was the, the low the low end and i knew that if i could just kind of get somewhere in the middle you know be the cheapskate maybe not put out the best product first go around but i could kind of start acquiring these things so i literally i i out of necessity took this big idea and I, and I chunked it down into, okay, I'm not going to design, I'm going to do, well, what I did first was I did a really simple layout of what I needed and I didn't put any of the bells or whistles in it. I just kind of got like this basic core idea of what I needed that none of the other things were offering. And once I had that thing down, I just took it and I went ape shit. I shopped every, um, I shopped every like you know, freelance site, every single thing I could. I shopped Eastern Europe, I shopped India, I shopped this, I shopped that, I shopped China, all kinds of different places using those freelance sites to find someone that could do, or that, w that it would at least entertain the, the idea of what I wanted. And I found someone. It wasn't, and we, I mean, I can go forever, but it was, I found someone that would entertain the idea and they were willing you know, they were fairly new. They didn't have a lot of clients and they were willing to put it together for a ridiculously low amount of money. So that was like really my first chunk. I, it's the, again, the original idea is some million, a hundred, uh, six figures, million dollar build out, depending on who you talk to for the complexity of this site. I go, okay, well, let's take it down. Let's not make it as complex. Uh, and let's just get a very simplified outline and let's see if we can shop that to somebody that might take it on. So I chunked it down. I took this big concept and I just went, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's take it down. Let's see what we can find. And I found someone that was ultimately willing to give it a shot. They were a little bit new, a little green, a little, uh, what, what do you call it? Wet behind the ears. They were green, but they were willing to give it a go. And I had a, a budget in mind and I was willing to give it a go. And so we gave it a go. And the developer worked at it and she slaved over it and did the best that he possibly could. But ultimately, he couldn't give it. He couldn't give me everything that I needed, but he was able to get me 60% of the way to my first thing. And that took, you know, there were some shortcomings. It took a lot longer than if I had paid top dollar for it, but it kind of got me there. And then when he wasn't able to deliver the remaining, the remainder of what I needed him to deliver, then I had to start looking for a new group of developers that could kind of get me the rest of the way so here's the thing I took it down to the smallest level got it to a certain point at that point there's no going back you didn't really set up an ex an, an escape plan so you go to the next level so you go okay well you know i'm already this far we're 60 70 percent of the way let's just get someone in here that, <clears throat> that can finish it and uh, we'll just try to get this thing moving and that's what i did i, I searched and it took forever to find another developer or actually this was a smaller team of developers that could kind of take what this uh, this newer gr wet behind the ears developer had done and turn it into what you now see on monumentlimited.com we're calling that version 1.0 and it was um it was a learning curve for me because i realized for the first time in my life that all you really got to do is just 
get the ball rolling, you know, and to get the ball rolling, it's, it's that first little push. You just got to whoop, right? And then it starts rolling. And from there, it's easier to keep pushing it, you know, whether it's throwing a little bit more money at it, you know, or throwing a little bit more of your time at it. It's easy once it's rolling. And it was a crazy learning curve for me. Super stressful. I never wanted to go through it again, but it, it happened. And then what I ended up getting out of that, out of that whole experience, I spent the first, the initial go around was about $6,200 for the first site, for the first developer. He got me 60% of the way there. The remaining amount that was spent really ended up going into the, to the high 20s. So with the next team, I ended up spending roughly 25, uh, not additional, but total, including the six or whatever that I spent with the original guy, but about 25K all in to get it more or less what you see right now, you know, give or take five grand. Uh, so it worked out, right? And I did, I just really just, I, I had this big idea for this big vision couldn't get there right i didn't have a six i didn't have 100k i didn't have 500k definitely didn't have a million so it wasn't going to happen that way but you scale it back to the basics and you start searching for there you know when you scale it back into a smaller section you won't get everything you need but it'll 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 get the ball rolling and it's much easier to to take that next step once it's going and then it's easier to take the next step and it's easier to commit a little bit more and a little bit more the real trick is finding a way to dedicate a certain amount of your energy and your time to uh, to an idea, a huge idea, but taking that and making it smaller so that you can dedicate a little bit of time every single day. I did that by, you know, I'm still running the print shop. I still had to get money coming in, but I could dedicate about two hours every day to creating the UI. So I was able to lay out the way that I wanted it to work. That allowed me to actually prototype the idea to developers. And the developers could get a pretty clear idea of how it needed to work. And they could go, okay, well, I think I can do that. And a newbie was willing to tackle it for a lot less money. You know what I mean? So I was, you sectioned it. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over and over again. But I feel like that's how you do it. Now, I've seen tons of books, this goddamn Get Clients Now book, and the, you know, all the different self-help help books are out there. And they'll tell you how you, you, know, you divide what you want by 12 months, and then you get your, your yearly cost to get where you want to be, and then you divide that by, by uh, 12, and you'll get your monthly cost, and you divide that by how many days a week you work, and you can get this. And now you know what numbers you need to hit uh, to get where you want to be at the end of the year. You know, all that shit is, it's kind of like, it's kind of bullshit. What you, I think what all of us need to know is how do you just, how do you take a big idea and make it actionable? And I believe that's the way. Set aside a little bit of time every day to work on it with a goal in mind. Like if you can do, if you do it for one hour a day, you should be able to get this done by this amount of time, whether it's a month or a week or a year. And then after you have that done, then you can go to the next step and you can start so searching for what you need to get that thing done and blah 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 i did the exact same principle with the mobile press i had never in my life uh talked to an engineer or a, say you know anything like that what i did was said i told a friend of mine who that i was looking to build a press that you could you could do certain things with and he goes well you know actually i talked to somebody because i needed help designing my loft he was building out a building and i go oh well, that's interesting and he goes yeah dude if you talk to an engineer uh they'll get you set up and they'll only charge you like 100 bucks an hour and i go oh shit well i can't afford that but from the resources i had used when building the website i knew that i had i could go to certain places and get them cheaper if i if i looked outside of america so i did that and sure as shit i was able to find the resource i needed just to get the concept out and of course, I had to take a bunch of time to, to, to draft up the concept as best as I could on paper. I used Adobe Illustrator. And then I could then present that to somebody who was willing to work for a little bit less and got the ball rolling. And the next thing you know, got a mobile press that everybody wants. You know, everybody wants it. Nobody's got it, but everybody wants it. And I did that by chunking it down. So... You can apply that formula to pretty much anything, whether it's getting your finances in order, whether it's turning into a $5 million a year 
in revenue shop. You know, you can do it just by chunking it down. Here's what you want and then work your way backwards. Figure out what you need to do so that you can take a few hours a day, you know, on your working days and, and, and slowly start working your way to that goal. All over the place with the shit. And it's crazy because I, I, here's what happened. I'm going to tell you guys something. This is, this is how crazy and nuts my mind is. Thought about it. Wrote, I don't know, how many paragraphs is this? Six paragraphs on the, on the concept? And it started going somewhere that requires, I don't know, uh, probably 12 pages to explain. So this is going to be something that I actually dive into much better detail because... Uh, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this to this concept. So today I just want to really simplify it into that idea. Big idea, break it down, find out what you can do for a couple hours a day to get you just to that next step. Uh, I think the world that we're living in in 2018 no longer requires large cash investments from fucking already rich people. I think we're in a scenario where the freelance world is super strong. Uh, the, the small business world is, is strong. Uh, the world is opened up to us, so we have access to much lower wages in other countries. It sucks sometimes to not keep it all in America, but you know what? Fuck it. I feel like, dude, we're in a gigantic playground, and all of us can more or less build whatever we want because we have infinite resources at our fingertips. Literally at our fingertips. Just a few keystrokes away. Whatever you want, you can do it. Uh, and so, hopefully, you guys took something from that. I don't know. I don't. I didn't really know where to go with it. I was getting really technical in the writing, and I was like, "Well, dude, I would have to rehearse this shit for forever." So this time, I just riffed it based on some of my experiences. But I am going to be writing a blog post about this because I feel like I really want to go into much more detail. Don't worry, I'm crumpling it, but it's saved on my drive. That's it, man. God, that felt clunky. That felt really clunky. But hey, we got through it. We did get through it. And uh, thank you so much for <laughs> trying to listen to that. Uh, let's move on to... Did I have an Instagram shout-out today? No, I didn't. So it's time for the Q&A, huh? Hopefully you guys were calling in your questions while I was sitting there babbling incessantly for the better part of, I don't know, 20 minutes. I'm going to go to Maring Central, and we're going to see what we got. Uh, you guys, while, while we're doing that, let me know in the chat any other tips you guys have for chunking. You know, I'm not the only one that has figured that out. For sure, I'm not the only one that's figured it out. Because all of you, or the majority of you, are much like me. You started this with limited to no resources, and you're basically just, you know piecing it together as you go so let me know let everybody else in the chat know what kind of chunking you do to get you from a to b and what i have learned is that i'm incredibly resourceful and when you got no money you got to be resourceful right thanks guys uh thank you for listening good stuff yeah you're right trump you know what nah trump's a <laughs> He's a, uh, he's he's something. He does whatever he has to do to make a buck, dude. He doesn't feel bad about any of it. So it's neither here nor there. Oh, apparently you can't uh, say that you like Trump because the message gets retracted. But cool. Um, hopefully you guys called in your your questions because I'm going to my thing right now. Ah, oh, shit. What is happening? Every time I go live, it logs me out. And then I forget my password, and then I can't listen to whatever it is I wanted to listen to. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Hey, we got one question called in. So this is going to be a short one, guys. Let's listen to it, see what we got. Thank you so much for calling your questions in. I'm thanking you ahead of time. Let's see what we got. Hi, Cam. It's Jamie Lineback with Rally Cry Screen Printing. And I just wanted to get in touch and express my appreciation for you and your vlogs and the show and the print fam. Um, Thank you. You creating the print fam has just been 
super freaking helpful, and I just wanted to let you know because it's rad. I That's post awesome. stuff, questions, whatever. I can be freaking out. <laughs> I can be honest, and people have been super cool and really yeah. helpful, and I just, I just really appreciate it. Seriously. It right warms my heart, for real. <laughs> right so on. anyway, I hope you have a great show, and um, keep rocking it, dude. Thank you. Okay, thank, bye-bye. Thank you, Jamie. You know, I didn't create it, man. I just started posting YouTube channel or YouTube videos, and y'all pretty much created it. All I did was create some platforms, and it turned – I've said this before. It turned into something that I did not expect. So what I have to do is thank you for – crediting me with that but it's not i can't take credit for it you guys cut you guys tune in you guys hang out you guys interact with each other far more than i interact uh i just hope that you guys will continue to push forward with it and keep growing the group and keep helping each other out because honestly sometimes there's questions that get asked that i don't have the answer to and i can go to that group and i can find answers to some of my more troubling questions and i think this is what I really – this is – let me tell you what I really look forward to about especially the Print Life Facebook group. We're – you know, even me, like I'm technically not an OG by screen printing standards. There are, there are printers that have been in this business for 30, 40 years. So I'm still a, a new blood. But we are cultivating the next generation. So we're all learning together, and we're becoming experts together. And as we rise – you know, as we rise through the ranks of this industry and we start capturing more of that market share, uh, we're going to just we're going to have more resources at our fingertips and we're going to help each other grow and we will help each other keep our finger on the pulse of this industry in a way that even a lot of the industry insiders currently can't. You know what I mean? That's what we got to look forward to. So let's just keep pushing the group, man. Let's keep sharing the knowledge, getting the information out there. Who knows where it's going to go? You know what I'm saying? It ain't me, though. It's, it, it, the, the fam, I just initiated it, but you guys have grabbed the torch and ran with it. But thank you so much for sharing, Jamie. It's awesome to hear from you. Uh, let's see if any other questions came through. If not, I'm going to – you guys can start submitting a few questions in the chat, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tackle a couple of them. Let's see what we got. Starting from the top. Oh, Sam Am. Hey, Cam from Sam and Joseph in Australia. Thank you guys for the super chat. That's what's up. I appreciate it. Any questions? Nope, no questions. Uh, Waldo2413 at me says, MGK went off on him. Machine Gun Kelly went off on Eminem. So this is not screen printing related, but yeah, he did. But like I said, it almost felt like he had written that thing years ago and he, i like just like i said if i was a hip-hop artist and i was in that industry on a public level i would have slams against every relevant artist if i wasn't working on an album i would be writing slams for every artist and it almost felt like that's what he had because he came out with that thing in like three days and it was very detailed you know what i mean but yeah it was cool man to, yeah, he did. It was a it was a riff. It wasn't a steal. It was a uh, what do you call it? What do they call that? Uh, when you take, when you reference something, I fucking I don't know. But yeah, it wasn't stolen. It was blatantly obvious a Beastie Boys cover. Uh, I think it was an homage. It's an homage. And my cell phone's tripping. What we got here. Okay, never mind. Ooh, Domino's Pizza is telling me that I can get a pizza for five ninety nine. Should I do it? Probably. Uh oh. Hey. Whoa. Uh -oh. Didn't mean to do that. Hmm. This is an interesting one. This is from Jason Inns. Do any of you guys have issues with transparency film images getting a yellow haze around the image after a few days? It doesn't always happen. Oh, man. So it's almost like the. The, some of the dye from the black is bleeding out. I've never seen that. I feel like that would probably be something associated with a, a climate that's higher in humidity. Because maybe the, the, the ink dye doesn't fully cure and it allows it to kind of bleed out maybe. I've never experienced it. That's crazy. Uh, from Holy Merch, man. He's just giving me a shout out saying thanks for all the content. Thanks for all the videos. You're welcome, man. Thank you guys for watching. 
You know what? That is a good question. Where is Sonny Gray? Everybody's asking, wondering where he's at. I'd like to know too. Hopefully he's still kicking in the print game. You know what I mean? Oh, it's weird. I haven't heard from him since the live event. The Frank 70. Prime example is that LED exposure unit. This is probably in, re in regards to something else, but he's basically claiming how, how many thousands of dollars are not going to be wasted on overpriced commercial equipment. I agree to some, I agree, you know, in some ways. However, the industry as a whole does, that's why I like m and I feel like a lot of m and stuff is made right here on the shores of America. Maybe not all the parts, maybe not all of the electronic pieces like the like the motors and all that kind of stuff but i feel like the majority of the assembly and the welding and the heavy lifting is done here in america that's that's something that m r offers i think that's pretty cool i think so it may not even be the case anymore dude it may be all they may every part of it may be done i don't know nothing about them but i do like that when things are, are here in america but uh you also you also gotta Especially when you're starting out, you got to keep your costs low, man. And Americans are gr Americans think they're worth so much. They really do. It's crazy, actually. Sometimes, like you look at it, like uh, people believe from the bottom of their hearts that they're worth like whatever a, a fair living wage is, just for being here or just for asking for the job. It's like, no, 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 no. Like whatever happened to the low paid apprentices that had to work their way up. I did it in plumbing, started at eight bucks an hour as a, a laborer. And I worked all the way up, man, to like 20 bucks. And it, it happened quick, but it was based solely on performance. Now everyone thinks that they should start at like the higher wages. Anyway, fucking this bullshit. Okay, guys, that's it, man. We're done because there's not a lot of questions. Let me refresh this ring, the the uh, hotline one more time. If there's nothing left, we out this motherfucker. Oh, there's one. Okay, so we got one more. Let's play this bad boy. Hey, what's up, Cam? It's uh, Jimmy Johnson from Miami, Florida with uh, New Era Printing. What's up, Jimmy? Uh, I'm a local shop. I work at my garage. Cool. Um, I wanted to get your feedback on how you feel about two print companies basically joining together. Hmm. Um, I have a local print shop that uh, we're good friends and we're thinking about doing this partnership thing. Um, like I said, I work at my garage. He's already basically set up full automatic, uh, pretty decent space warehouse not not too far away from where i live mm -hmm. um but yeah i just want to uh i guess hear your feedback on how you feel about two print companies joining to, joining forces yeah thanks they, uh, dude thank you so much for the question that's an interesting question i've i've actually thought about that in great detail um for me personally I've even considered approaching people about it. I would never do it because I could never have a partnership. Wouldn't trust them. Uh, wouldn't you know? Wouldn't want to share any of the, the shit I want to do the way I want to do it the way I want to do it. I just I could never partner up. However, I, I feel like there could be some benefits to it. Uh, a lot to gain from your perspective because you're working out of your garage. You know, you're, you're going to get more resource, resources by teaming up with him. You know, especially if you're both utilizing your your um, resources for, like, getting clients. Like, maybe you have a website and they have a website. And you're both going to keep those two, like, funnels feeding you work. It could, it could benefit both of you. Where I would be worried, especially for you, is that if this person is already established with an automatic is that they're kind of almost like acquiring their competition especially if the person's smart they're gonna they're gonna try to set it up to where you're more or less their employee i mean my super paranoid ass would think that that's what they're trying to do from jump street 
but I'm paranoid. I once thought that, uh, you know, big shops were put near me to keep an eye on me and make sure I don't grow too fast. I'm hyper paranoid, but I would be very nervous that that kind of thing would be happening. So if you're going to join up with a partnership, I mean, you got to draft up paperwork, you know, if you're combining businesses that, you know, what your ownership percentage is, what your job duties are, what their job duties are. But I guarantee you they're going to try to get you to they're going to try to basically acquire you and then start working you. And ultimately, you'll become their employee. Dude, have you guys ever watched The Profit on, on NBC? Is it NBC, ABC with the Marcus Lemonis guy? At first, I was like, oh, that's so cool. He comes in, and then you start really seeing what he's doing. And he basically buys employees that will run the company for him for a, for small salaries and some profit sharing. So he, you know, he just buys up businesses, and he, and he, he buys employees as opposed to, like, hiring managers and shit like that. He's buying managers, and that's probably something that's very similar going to happen to you. I'd be very hesitant. Dude, I wouldn't do it shit and here comes the paranoia I'm just, I would never do it not in a million fucking years but maybe maybe it's the right move for you but dude you can do you can do it on your own there is a the thing about the screen printing industry is there's a lot of business man a lot of work out there there's enough for everybody and that's the beautiful thing about it you don't you don't need to team up with anybody you can do it on your own that's what I would say if you decide to team up, make sure you get it in writing and, and establish everything that you're going to be doing, everything that they're going to be doing, and how you're going to split it up. Also, how you're going to be splitting up the profits, right? Because now you're combining revenue into one shop. I don't know, man. I don't know. The more I think about it, hell to the no. But thanks for the question, man. Very good. I think about it all the time, bro. But like I said, so paranoid. Uh, but thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Okay, here's one more for us. Hey, Cam, it's Eric over here with Southern Pond. We're down here in North Carolina. What's up, Eric? We've just been printing for a couple of months, man. I uh, got us the Riley Hopkins Junior Press, uh, two station, four color. A um, few other pieces of equipment, but I'm having trouble, man, uh, curing my plastic installing. So I've got a flash dryer. Mm. Uh, the, the center cures perfect. The edges don't. Mm. Um, I've used the oven. Uh, it's time consuming. I just didn't know if there was a better way of curing shirts at production speeds without a conveyor dryer. Not really, no. Uh, the oven is actually just a better bet because it has more even heat distribution. The the flashes are awesome. We use them on, you know, certain. We use them, but the problem is, is that they, especially when it's like open, it gets a little bit hotter towards the middle and the edges just don't get that same amount of heat. So it's problematic. Um, and curing with a flash dryer is tough, dude. I mean, we've, I figured out a way to do it, but it kind of re requires almost like moving the flash back and forth, right? And like not letting it just stay stagnant. And also you have a certain per, like you have a certain amount that you can do. Like we found that maybe 10 inches works okay on like a 16 by 16, but anything over that, it's going to get more cured in the middle and not as cured on the outside. Uh, what else, man? You can... If I was using a flash to cure it on a production, I wouldn't want to do it, man. I wouldn't want to do it. But if you have to, go to, like, Nevertheless Screen Printing. They have some interesting flashes that have, like, a dual, like, two pallets, and you can swing one under while you're loading the other one on it. Check out Nevertheless Screen Printing's, like, pallet flashes and shit like that, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But just get a conveyor dryer as quickly as you can. That's your best option. They're not that expensive, man. Just forget that curing it with a flash thing. Don't work. Not on a production level. But yeah, thanks for the question. Hopefully that, that helped. Um, I'm trying to think what else you can do. Because I know ultimately you just want to cure your garments for now with the flash unit. Um, I don't know if you're swinging it over the pallet or if you have a separate pallet on the flash, but if you are swinging it over the pallet, you, you're gonna you want to like lit you want to untack the pallet from the board because that kind of gives an air gap under the fabric, which it does. It, it surprisingly works well. It allows it to cure more evenly as opposed to when it's stuck down to the pallet. So that'll help too. That'll also prevent you from overheating your pallets. 
uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? That's all I can think of right now. But I would really get a flash, you know, with, with, with the stand here, and it has its own palette on it to where you can pull the shirt off the palette, sit it on the flash, and then swing the flash over it while you're printing the next one. Go to neverthelessscreenprinting.com. You'll see what I'm talking about. They got some stuff there. All right, yeah, anyway, thanks for the question, dude. I'm all over the place. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Print Life Live. Today was a weird one, man. I feel fucking... I feel weird, man. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Talked about M. Talked about the business topic, sort of. I, I didn't really... I felt like I didn't really get where I wanted to go with that. You know what I'm saying? There was some stuff I really wanted to nail in the topic today, but I just didn't get there. I was kind of running on. Okay, here's a question from Kyle. I'm new to screen printing uh, and um, just about to open my own shop. You said there's enough business for all of us out there. How would you go about getting business as a new starter? Eh, website. Website, 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 website. Enough said. Uh, all right, guys. We'll talk to you guys. We'll talk to you next week. Uh, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and share this video along with all the other videos I upload. I'm taking a little break, but I'll be back shortly to the YouTube uh, posting schedule. In the meantime, you all know what you got to do, print fam. Take care of yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Take care. And go listen to that Eminem Kapikaze album if you haven't already. It's pretty cool. It's, it's good. It's not great, but it's good. Peace out.